Alex Ryder Stormbreaker. This is a 2006 Nintendo DS game based on a film released that same year. It's a licensed movie game, so, you know, keep your expectations in check. And I've, I've never actually seen the movie, but from what I can tell, it's basically like a British kid 007, you know, kids movie kind of spy action film kind of thing. And um, kind of an interesting thing is that he actually has a Nintendo DS as a gadget in this movie, so some product placement there. Um, but, you know, this game, you know, I, I, you have to kind of keep your expectations in check with these kind of movie games. But I found it to be pretty cool for what it is. And um, it has a lot of variety and some really cool set pieces. That has two major play styles, basically. There's the main play style, which is kind of this, like, janky 3D brawler that has, like, tank controls and stuff. And you walk around, so actually decently impressive looking uh, 3D environments. But you sneak up on guards, or in most cases... You just fight them. You don't have to really sneak up on them. You have three actions during battle. You can punch, you can kick, you can block. And early on, stamina management is a thing. So so being able to utilize these three tools is something that you'll have to consider. And, and actually running around in the environment outside drinks your stamina too. So if you like walk into a fight without realizing it and you have no stamina, you have to kind of like <laughs> circle the enemy until you get your stamina back kind of thing. But overall, th there's a level up system here that kind of negates any of that stamina management really. And it very quickly becomes a mash fest where you basically just punch enemies a ton. So how you level up and, 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 and gain a lot of other things actually is um, you explore the environments and you look for power-ups on the floor. Um, there's uh, money on the floor as well. Well, experience points and, uh, and healing items as well so you can recover HP and stuff like that and occasionally some mission objectives are on the ground too um, so you kind of have to explore these environments a little bit and early on it's actually a little tiresome because while they are you know like visually somewhat impressive mechanically they're kind of boring they're just kind of big square rooms and things like that and you'll either find an item or an enemy in it but quickly you will gain access to the Nintendo DS not your Nintendo DS that you're playing the game on the in-game Nintendo DS that you use as a gadget so how this gadget works is there's in the game cartridge slot you put different game cartridges in and that gives you different tools so there's one that identifies items on maps there's one that identifies enemy locations there's one that puts up a green smoke screen kind of thing and uh, you can actually buy some more items as well throughout the game but there's this weird system well the store is basically you have to quit the game to get to the store. It's a very strange thing, and I didn't even ever see the store until after I beat the game. Um, but thankfully, these tools mostly, well, maybe not thankfully, but in the case of not knowing that the store was there, um, you know, these tools aren't really that useful, actually. The game's just very easy, so just basically turning on the item identifying one just makes your life easy, because then you can quickly just kind of go around the map, pick up the items that matter, and then just leave the area and go to the next place. So... The game is just super easy, so like actually going in and fully collecting all these items is just more for your own satisfaction most of the time. So um, these sections are really clunky and they have you know tank control, so so they don't feel great to play. But overall, they're pretty short, and it doesn't spend a lot of time in these sections. So it, or you don't spend a lot of time in these sections, so it's pretty easy to not really get flustered or frustrated because you'll just make it out and then you get to what I would say is like kind of the bigger appeal of this game and that's all the mini games that kind of happen between these missions so there's lots of variety in this game where in between in, in between missions you'll you'll play a mini game and these mini games all use the ds and all the ways you'd expect a early ds game to use it right it has microphone support touchscreen support even turn the system 90 degrees at some point things like that right so there's this mini game where you like go and you'll swim around this pool and have to rub like this like metal melting lotion on the metal poles in there um um, there's like a parachute game where you have to fly through these kind of rings in the sky and then land in the proper place um, to, to make sure you land successfully. It's kind of pilot wings-esque kind of thing. Um, there's a couple different like, I don't know, racing isn't the right word, but like travel modes where you're like going through um, cities or through the like, like cliffside and and while visually there's not that much variety in them, it is kind of cool that they took the time to show progression through these elements so you can feel like you're really going somewhere and the game runs really smoothly. So, you know, all these mini games are just like very short, easy and, and, and easy to get into and, and very action packed. And then they all, I think, kind of fit well with like the story of the game overall. Um, there's kind of this, um, I guess you could say like uh, digitized imagery put in the game where basically it'll show you the cutscenes from or, or images from the movie itself and then they put little like text around it and so they do a pretty good job of making sure all these mini games kind of align with like the major plot points of the movie and that the cutscenes kind of lead into it there's a, occasionally times where like you will have a scene happen and they don't explain to you 
you know, what happened between two frames and it can be a little confusing, but overall, you know, I don't think you're really probably here super interested in the story of Alex Ryder Stormbreaker. So if you miss something, I don't think it's like a huge deal. So, um, but it is nice to see like what they're doing with, with the limited assets they have of basically like uh, 20 screenshots from the movie and then some like scrolling text on screen and stuff like that. So um, there is one mini game I will say that kind of is out of place. Um, it is actually not a bad mini game. It just doesn't really match the rest of like kind of the fast paced pacing of the game, um, which is pool. You can play pool. It's weirdly in depth. Um, it probably doesn't have super accurate physics, but you know, I think it works well enough for being a mini game in a larger game. Um, and you can actually access the mini game from the title screen as far as I can tell as well. So if you ever just need some pool, Alex Ryder Stormbreaker has got you. Um, but it, it took me like 10 minutes and I didn't even get to finish the game. It just took so long. And thankfully, like at least it seems like once you hit the 10 minute mark, as long as you have the higher score, you, you will win and you can advance the story kind of thing. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, this game is like super short overall. It is like a two hour video game. So it's all condensed down and basically the length of a movie. Um, and I feel like it's the perfect length for this kind of game, right? The game is janky. It doesn't feel great to play most of the time. Even the mini games don't feel amazing most of the time, but it's functional and it works. And I think for, for the type of game that this is, you know, shoving that down into two hours just makes it, you know, pretty forgivable overall. I kind of, I kind of have like a one to three hour, like just like if your game's kind of messed up, as long as you're doing something cool, I'm pretty happy about it. And like, and like this is like a two hour fun summer flick movie crammed into a DS game. And I think it really kind of embodies the feel of that. Um, you know, the 3D segments with the like, you know, third person brawler stuff. Does it bring down the pace of the game a bit? Sure. But you're never in one long enough to really sit there and be like, ah, oh, I wish this was done. Most of the time, by the time you're feeling that you are getting out of it and going off into some other little mini game or going into a cutscene where you get to see, you know, these characters interact with each other. I mean, the, the whole movie just seems like kind of a silly, fun, good time as well. And I think some of that kind of carries over into the the storytelling a little bit. You know, you get to see him basically randomly find, I assume, his girlfriend who's like doing horse riding lessons and then just is like, I need to save the world. He's like, okay. <laughs> she just like rides you off on a horse with her. It's kind of, it's kind of silly. I have no idea if she knew that you were a spy or not at that point. I don't know, but you know, whatever. Um, so I can't say, you know, this is the optimal may way to enjoy the lore and narrative of Alex Ryder Stormbreaker. Um, but you know, if you're just looking for a short little afternoon arcadey kind of fun DS game to play, um, I think, you know, it's janky, but I think it respects your time and, it, and I think it achieves what it tries to do, you know, trying to capture the look and feel of that kind of like kids summer movie in, in, in video game form, probably made on a budget as well. <laughs>